welcome oh my best friend texted me in the beginning of the video but anyway if you are new here welcome if you are not welcome back hugs bougie kiss bougie kiss let me turn my phone off um or silence it because yeah anyway um before we hop into it you already know i have services www.lawofassumptionprincess.com and i will actually be offering something else soon i will be doing um self-love spells honey jars things of that nature i'm trying to see like what the hair is giving anyway um so if that's something you're interested in keep your eyes peeled because y'all know that your girly is a practitioner i do practice so i thought that those would be really good to add because uh self-love spells man like the power and the invigoration of course you don't need these things but if it was something that you would be interested in you know where to come all right Anyway, let's hop right into it, y'all. I am running off of a bang energy right now because I've been at the gym for like majority of my day, child. I don't got so much done today. Oh my gosh. I know that they say those energy drinks are bad for you, but I have transformed my assumption about that, okay? Because they just, ugh, they just put a little pep in my stuff. Y'all know what y'all know y'all know how it is. Anyway, let's get into it. So today I really wanted to talk about identity and how important identity really is. And pretty much it's hand in hand with self-concept. You know, when we talk about self-concept, we are talking about identity, but I kind of wanted to just restructure it a little bit because y'all know I kind of put tip-isms on things and say it in the Tiffany way. And it clicks for a lot of y'all, which I love. The reason that I wanted to get into identity specifically today is because I know that for a lot of people, what tends to happen when it comes to law of assumption, when it comes to manifesting, is a lot of circumstances, conditions, limitations, and honestly, what I call pendulums, okay, I like to call them pen pendulums, um, will surface, right? And when you are hyper fixating, when you are focusing and emphasizing a condition, and you're wondering how, when, uh, how can I be sure? You're asking all of these questions in reference to how can you know that you are going to have it? That is a clear indication that your identity is still attached to a version of you that obviously does not have the manifestation. And not only that, not only that, is still attached to the version of you who doesn't get what they want. They're still attached to the version of you who has to ask someone out here why, who has to look for an external source, isn't going within, but going out here, right? And as we know, as we have fully understood by this point in time, that is reverse engineering because here's source. So if I know that I'm source, but I'm still going out here for direction and for clarity, that means my identity is rooted in something that is not benefiting me. Now, the reason why this is so important also is because when you structure your identity, when you have laid down a sturdy foundation and you know yourself as a person who gets everything they want, as a person who can manifest instantly, it doesn't matter the conditions, it doesn't matter the circumstances, right? When you solidify that identity within yourself, everything else follows action follows movement follows those are not things that you have to hyper fixate on and or worry about because they're a package deal they all nothing is sold separately nothing is sold separately right so this is why when you hear people say they started working on their self-concept and it seemed like everything just started coagulating and conforming and manifesting for them it's because it's not a trying process when you are hyper fixating okay on these limitations on the what ifs but this looks like this it's not looking good da -da 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 -da. that is you giving a piece of your identity away and saying oh i still don't think that I'm the God of my reality. I still don't think that I'm capable and therefore I'm going to allow this one any itty bitty piece of an entire puzzle 
to convince me that I don't have power, that I am not capable, that what I want cannot take place. Do you see quite naturally how that is not helping you at all in the long run? And I know that this is an unconscious thing and this is why it's the repetition of showing up, the repetition of a being, the repetition of saying the affirmation or whatever technique you would like to use, the repetition is what gets you rooted in being comfortable as God and being comfortable as omnipotent, as operant, as the person who runs the show. I get it. I understand. When you feel as though you have been an extra for an extended period of time, coming into producer role can seem scary. But this is when you have to ask yourself, how bad do I want this promotion? How badly would I like to move up the ladder? There is a reason, I said this in my last upload too, there is a reason, okay, why it doesn't feel good when you start doubting and giving pieces of yourself away bit by bit to an external circumstance. There's a reason for that. Notice that, okay? Notice that when you are stressed, when you are worried, when you are wondering, when you are frazzled, when you don't feel secure in yourself, that doesn't feel good for a reason, okay? It's because that is not rooted in your true and actual identity. Yeah, you're wearing a costume. And some of y'all got that flipped. Y'all think that deciding to be the operant power of your reality, deciding to be the person that has all of the power and buying the pearl, y'all think that stepping into that is actually putting on the costume. No, the costume is the doubt and the fear. That is the costume. That is not who you actually are. That is who you were tricked into thinking that you were. So that is the costume that you have to take off. I need you to go get dressed in your, in your Sunday's best. I need you to be dressed to the nines because we're going to the Emmys. Why are you dressing like you work at the supermarket? <laughs> okay, take that costume off and get ready for the Met Gala, right? But yeah, a lot of times that is what's going on is y'all are convincing yourselves that because you are now identifying as the god of your reality that somehow some way this can't really be connected to you and i empathize i empathize because anything new anything unfamiliar is gonna feel weird at first but again this goes back to making the deliberate decisions even if something feels weird even if something feels abnormal a little scary because it's not something you've ever done before you still have to stand on the decision and have the ultimate capability to stand on the decision that you are now this person that you are now the version of yourself that you were always meant to be it's like if i move to california am i still going to identify as a resident of pennsylvania I have to change all of my license. I have to change everything. I have to change my license. I have to change my insurance. I have to change my address. Obviously, I have to change my paperwork. And every time I go somewhere new, right, I have to let them know, hey, this information about me has changed. I live in a different state now. I live in California. I no longer live in Pennsylvania. So what, what happens when you go to the doctor? What happens when you go somewhere that is in need of, the, of your information. What happens when, what happens when information that is directly connected to you changes? They go in the computer and they update the information, right? That is literally what will happen with your reality if you stop identifying with the lack, okay? And you know this, low key, this is, come on, this is kind of remedial. But I just felt the need to give y'all a little reminder because I know we need a little zhuzhing. Like manifesting where Kimberly says, a uh, 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 Somebody sent her this clip, a uh, zhuzhing. <laughs> we need a zhuzhing. Sometimes we need a zhuzhing. You feel me? We need a zhuzhing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying that because I know that you know this. Because you're smart. Because you're limitless. Because you're everything that is right with the world. So I already know that you know. But as your big sister, I had to check you. But yeah, when you leave with your identity, y'all, when you prioritize your self-concept, 
life is on easy mode. It's on easy mode. Because even when you're in a circumstance that you don't like, even when you are presented with something that is of an old distant memory that we no longer know, right? That is none of your business. It's an old ass book from 1912, okay? We don't know her. If you are presented with that, all you have to do in order to center yourself and come back to the awareness of who you are is ask yourself, if I knew that my identity is centered, anchored, and rooted and being the person that has it all and being the person that always gets chosen. I know that I can manifest instantly. I know that I have what I want with no effort. I know that the minute I claim something, it unravels. I know these things about myself. I know this, right? You will ask yourself, okay, if I knew these things about myself, how would I react to this circumstance? Would I get involved with it? Would I try to go back and forth with it? Would I run myself up, down, all around? Would I go topsy-turvy? Or, 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 would I make the bad bitch decision to turn the left cheek and give the circumstance my ass to kiss? Because I am the superior. I am the God. This circumstance has literally nothing to do with me. I'm changed. I've, rever I've reverted back to true self. So whose business this circumstance is? I don't know. I have no idea. But I can tell you one thing for damn sure. It's none of my business because I'm too good to even look at it. So I'm going to take my awareness away. I'm going to turn it towards what the fuck I want because that's my business. That's my story. And nothing external out here could ever make me come down off of my throne. Practice this. When you get upset, when you have big emotions, when a circumstance arises, you are always presented with a decision. Like I said in my last upload, Fall in love. Become immersed. Think about how fucking fun. Who's your favorite celebrity? Like, who's your favorite person? Who's somebody that you, you idolize or you identify with in any kind of way? How fun would it be for you to give yourself the permission and capability to feel like the queen, king, or whatever of your own quarters, of your own kingdom, your own castle. Because that's really what you want. Yes, okay, we have a desire for these things. But the desire is not going to bring you the actual fulfillment. What brings you genuine fulfillment is being so rooted and comfortable in your new identity. Because in that, there is so much liberation. There is so much freedom. You're breaking the toxic narratives. You're breaking, you're breaking the toxic cycles. You're closing those chapters. And that feeling is the real prize. Choosing you is the real prize. Being rooted and grounded in your true identity is the real prize. Because that lets you know that no matter what the circumstances look like, all I have to do is reference in here. And when you literally accept that as true, when you have that grand realization that all I need is self, I never have to look anywhere else, that is why life becomes easy mode that is why it turns out to be on easy mode because you're not frazzled you're not looking for the permission from somebody else you're not looking externally you're not shaking yourself up you're staying true to your god power and there's a reason that it feels good because that's actually who you are lead with your identity become obsessed when I say obsessed, become obsessed with your self-concept. Like I said before, do it for the self-concept points. Do it for the self-concept points. You will thank yourself. Give yourself you back. Give yourself back to you.
okay? Oh, y'all like Stanley Who? This isn't even sponsored. I got this off of Amazon for $20. Like, I don't know. It's Oh, it's called a Zimbo. It's called a Zimbo. I'll link it down here, but Stanley Who? This was $20 and it's holographic and it's cuter. Drink of the day is Kiala. Kiala Greens. I don't know if y'all seen that. It's like all over TikTok. And I have to say, I quite like it. But I will get the watermelon flavor the next time. But if you're, um, you know, an intuitive eating girly like me or like a healthy person and you like healthy drinks and like stuff that makes you feel good, I recommend Kiala Greens. I better not catch you doing peasant shit. <laughs> I'm in it right here, y'all. <laughs> okay, if you would like to go ahead and follow me on Twitter at It's Her Universe, you already know. And also, don't forget to follow me Actually, to be real, I'm going to fight you if you don't follow me <laughs> on TikTok and Insta at Tiffari Grande. I am literally, when I'm not posting, always on TikTok, always on Insta. And also, I have my Love Assumption Princess Instagram, which is like my little community that I love so much. Come join us over there. I post a lot more at Love Assumption Princess on Insta. And until next time, you know that I love you. 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 I love you.